Make a snack. Physical computing friends, this is Prof G, and in this video we're going to show you how you can connect to your Raspberry Pi's graphical desktop, even though it's not hooked up to a keyboard or mouse. And we're going to do that by accessing the Pi from a computer that's on the same Wi-Fi network as the Pi, and we'll use a free utility called VNC, which stands for Virtual Network Computing. Now access to the Pi's desktop over the internet can be a bit slow. Most of the time when I use my Pi remotely, I just use the terminal and run text commands, but sometimes you want to access the desktop or graphical programs that run on the Pi, and we can absolutely do that over the network. So let's learn. Now first, I'm assuming that you've already set up your Raspberry Pi on your network. If you haven't, the first tutorial video that you'll find at this URL, bit.ly slash raspberry dash pi dash tutorials, all lowercase, will show you how to easily set that up without needing an external keyboard or mouse. And when we access the Pi without a keyboard or mouse, this is sometimes called headless Pi operation. And that's what we're going to be doing here, only now we're going to access the desktop, not just the terminal. So first, let's get that free VNC software. I'm going to open my browser and search for VNC Viewer. The, the first link takes me to real VNC. They've got a bunch of free viewers available for all of these platforms. I'm going to click Download VNC Viewer. My browser is configured to ask me where I want to save this, but if your browser doesn't ask you, it's probably going to save this file to your Downloads folder. I'll save mine to the desktop, then I'll close my browser. I'll open the file that was downloaded on the Mac, that's the .dmg file. I'm going to drag the VMC Viewer into the Application folder, and that's it. I don't need these two icons in the desktop, so I'm just going to highlight them and drag them into the trash. Next, we need to do a bit of setup work on the Pi, and we'll do that using the Terminal program, and this should be familiar to you if you went through our first setup video. Now, I have a Mac, so I'm going to open my Terminal with Spotlight, that's Command Spacebar. This box pops up, I'll type Terminal into the box and press Return, and the Terminal program runs. Then I'm going to increase the font size by typing Shift Command Plus a few times. And now with my Raspberry Pi turned on and connected to the same network as my computer, I'm going to log into the Pi. And here's a pro tip. If you press the up arrow in the terminal program, you'll scroll through the prior commands that you entered. If I press this once, I see the SSH command. If I press up arrow again, I see my keygen command. If you followed our previous video, you know that I entered those two commands in our last video. That's too far, so I can press the down arrow to go back to my login command. This is what I want to enter. You can certainly type this in, but it's nice to be able to use the arrow keys if you need to repeat any commands. So to log into my Pi using the terminal, it's SSH Pi at the name of my Pi is profgpi.local. Make sure that you use your Pi's host name though. And I'll press return, enter my password, and I'm in. Next, we want to run the Raspberry Pi configuration program. The command for that is sudo raspy-config. I just use the up arrows to find this command since I entered it the last time I was in terminal. Press return, and this launches the text-based program that allows you to control the system settings for your Pi. Now, to set up VNC, I want to select the third option here, interface option, so I'll press the down arrow twice, then press the return key. Then I want the VNC option, so I'll down twice again and press return. VNC is currently not enabled, but I'll press the left arrow and highlight yes, then press return. The VNC server is now enabled on my Pi. OK, press return. And I'm also going to set the display options for my Pi here as well. This is where you set the screen resolution. So highlight display options, press return, select VNC resolution. And here you can select whichever resolution you think is going to work well on your computer. One bit of advice though, the smaller the resolution, the less information that needs to be sent over the network. So that usually results in faster response time. I'm going to select this option here, 1024 by 768, and I'll press return. That's a small resolution, so you're going to see that there are big black bars around my Mac screen, because my Mac has a higher resolution, but this will be fine for my needs. And if you need to change these settings, you can always do so inside of Raspi Config. So pressing return should bring me back to the previous screen. Right arrow twice will highlight finish. I can press return. The Pi is going to ask me if I want to reboot to accept these settings. So I'm going to press return on yes. And after about 30 seconds, the Pi will reboot. I can up arrow and log back into the Pi again, because I have one more thing that I need to do before I can get into this using VNC. I need to find the Pi's IP address. Now, the IP address is the unique address for every device connected to the internet. And one way we can find the IP address for our Pi is by using the ifconfig command. So after you've logged in with your password, type ifconfig at the prompt and press return. Now the four numbers separated by three periods after inet, that's what I'm highlighting right here, that's your IP address. So you want to highlight this and copy it. Now I'm also highlighting the MAC address because my students are going to need the MAC address in order to register their Pis on the campus network. So my students also copy down your MAC address, but make sure that you copy the IP address for this tutorial. Then I'll type in clear just to clear the screen. Then I'll press Command Spacebar again to bring up Spotlight, and this time I want to launch my VNC Viewer. 
Press return, VNC viewer starts, and right in this top field here is where I'm gonna paste in my IP address and then I'm gonna press return. You'll get a message the first time you try to log into your Pi that the VNC server is not recognized. You can just press continue, this is expected. And now we're gonna log into our Pi. So our username to log into the Pi is Pi, P-I, lowercase. The password is the password you created for your Pi. I'm gonna click on remember my password so I don't have to enter it next time I use this. Then I'll click okay. And look at that, we've logged into our Raspberry Pi, even though it doesn't have a monitor or keyboard connected to it, and we can see the graphical desktop. Nice. Or should we say, almost nice, because we need to approve a few things on the Mac. You might have this on the PC as well. I need to click on Give Access. Then I need to open System Preferences in order to set up access. I'm going to click on the padlock in the lower left-hand corner. At this point, you need to enter your computer's password. Click Unlock. That will unlock the padlock settings. Then under Privacy, select the checkbox next to VNC Viewer. And once you do that, you can close this window. Now you see what I mean about having a smaller resolution that's not as big as the resolution on my Mac. I have these black bars that are around the edges because my resolution isn't as big as the Mac. If I go to the upper left-hand corner and click on the green traffic light, I'll expand to full screen, but I still see the black bars. But again, that's okay for me because I don't need lots of resolution on my Pi and it's just going to slow me down. So you can explore different functions here. If you click on the globe, that brings up a browser, which is kind of neat, but it's super slow because you're going over the extra network connection and rendering the screen over the network. So you probably don't want to surf the browser from your Raspberry Pi. So I'll speed this up. You can see what it can do. That's great. Click the Xbox in the upper right hand corner and that will close the browser. Something that is worth doing if you're using VNC is to get rid of the background pattern on the desktop because we don't want to send that extra graphic over the network if we don't need to. So right click anywhere on the desktop, select desktop preferences. Then under the layout pull down, select no image, click OK. And that hopefully will make things a little bit faster for us. Now there are plenty of great Pi tutorials online, so I don't wanna spend too much time on that, but if you click the Raspberry icon in the upper left, this opens your applications menu. There is a programming subheading and the Thonny Python IDE is there for Python programming. There's also the run command down here if you ever need to run anything. It's just like typing things into the command prompt. There is a terminal in here, but you probably wanna do that from your computer rather than inside of the Pi. And the file manager here should look familiar to anybody that's used the file manager on Windows. Again, you close Windows on the Pi desktop by clicking on the X in the upper right hand corner. You see an icon that will load updates that are available. And if you scroll to the very top, the VNC submenu will appear. This lets you have some control over the VNC interface. If you click this icon on the far left, that will remove you from the full screen view so you can have access to your computer behind the scenes. This second icon will expand the window so that the resolution is sort of right sized, although you still see the black bars in here, but you can click in the lower right hand corner and shrink the size of this window as well. Then when you're ready to shut down your Pi, you can go over to the Raspberry menu, pull down and select shutdown, then click the shutdown button. That's like doing a sudo halt. It'll take a little while before things shut down, but you probably want to do that every time you're done using your Raspberry Pi. And that's it. Congratulations, we've got VNC desktop set up so we can access our full Raspberry Pi, not just the terminal, but the desktop as well, over the internet without a terminal and keyboard if we need to. Now, if you enjoyed this, my YouTube channel has all of the videos for my university physical computing course. I teach this as a flipped class, so if you're an educator or independent learner, you're welcome to use these as well. My class covers CircuitPython on the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, and the Raspberry Pi. The class has a very broad introductory focus, so we cover art, tech for good, we build assistive technology projects, and we build robots. You'll also see lots of project examples, and my iOS course is also on that channel as well. And if this material was helpful to you, you can help me out by posting a like, sharing a comment, subscribing, and telling others. Now go make something awesome!